One of the biggest trading channels on YouTube made a video some time ago with the claim, trading psychology is bullshit. From the comments I see in the video, many people agree with his opinion. But I am sorry I am not one of those in agreement. Hence why I'm making this video. That statement is one of the biggest lies in the trading education niche and will lead many traders, especially newbies on the wrong path if they're not careful. In that video, the guru claimed that the most important thing is having an edge, and then trading psychology comes next. And from what I heard, it's believed that the edge is your strategy, which is already a winning strategy. If you are a fan of this guru's channel, you will probably disagree with me, but before you make a case, hear my argument. To start, I think we need to understand the concept of trading psychology. To do this, let's define the meaning of psychology as a concept. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, psychology is the scientific study of the nature, functioning, and development of the human mind, including the faculties of reason, emotion, and perception. It can also be said to be an individual or group's mental or behavioral characteristics. Trading as a concept is an age-long business, so I won't be dwelling much on it. But when we combine these two concepts, what does it really mean? Trading psychology relates to the psychological mind and emotional heart factors that influence your behavior and decision-making as a trader. It involves understanding how your mind functions when it comes to the buying and selling of financial assets. There are some basic concepts about trading psychology. I will try to explain them in the simplest way possible. You and I are emotional creatures. We're not robots. Fear and greed can cloud our judgment and lead to rash decisions. Trading psychology helps us recognize these emotions and keep them in check. Our brains also have built-in biases that can trick us, like overconfidence or following the crowd. But by understanding these biases, we can avoid making bad trades based on them. Trading psychology is all about discipline. It helps us stick to our trading plan, even when emotions are high and thus helps us avoid making impulsive decisions. It's basically building the mental strength to be a successful trader. So, what makes trading psychology the most important element in your journey as a trader as compared to what's been propagated by the guru? I will go over five reasons why your psychology as a trader is more important for your success than anything else as opposed to the idea of a winning strategy being the most important. Number 1. Greed and fear is a constant. Let me start with a quote from Jeff Bezos. I very frequently get the question, What's going to change in the next 10 years? And that is a very interesting question. It's a very common one. I almost never get the question, what's not going to change in the next 10 years? And I submit to you that that second question is actually the more important of the two because you can build a business strategy around the things that are stable in time. Permit me to ask you, what do you think will change in a couple of years and what will remain a constant? Yes. You heard it earlier, people will always be greedy and fearful. So, if that is a constant, do you think the strategy that works today will not be found out by greedy people who want to manipulate the market, take your stop loss, and make you lose all your money? Do you think the market will have a short supply of a new set of greedy traders who saw a video on YouTube promising they will become millionaires in a couple of months simply by clicking a button on their computers? Do you think you will suddenly become fearless tomorrow because your strategy wins all the time? Any trader, new or old, can easily answer these questions and they do not favor edge over trading psychology. Markets are dynamic. What works today might not work tomorrow. A strategy that wins all the time is unrealistic and a sudden shift could leave you exposed if your psychology is built on the expectation of constant success. To overcome the power of greed and fear, you need a solid trading psychology, and there is no other way around it. 2. No trading psychology, no backtesting. Let's assume for a second you stumbled upon the holy grail. Not hidden in some dusty library or whispered in hushed tones on Wall Street, but splashed across your screen in a YouTube video titled, The Market's Secret Strategy. 
intrigue battled skepticism as you clicked play. The presenter, a young guy with slicked back hair and a toothy grin, laid out a seemingly flawless strategy. Charts flashed, numbers danced, and success stories scrolled by. Millions, it promised, were at your fingertips. How do you know if this is truly the answer to your trading problems? Do you start trading real money using the strategy? Or do you backtest it? When most of us started out as traders, we did the former. But anyone who has an understanding of the market and a deep grasp of trading psychology would not only do the latter, but also forward test the strategy before risking real money. Why? Because they know that the market is neutral and only works in favor of those who do not go in with the mindset that they can and will win most of the time. Trading can be likened to a simple coin flip. Just like in flipping a coin, you have a 50 50th chance of getting either heads or tails. The same principle applies in trading where there is a possibility of either making profits or incurring losses. However, unlike flipping a coin, trading risks can be managed and probabilities can be better estimated, but this is only possible for people who prioritize trading psychology, not the idea of a trading strategy that you think gives you an edge. 3. You can lose your entire bank using a winning strategy. Well, that is the truth. A truth most of us found out the hard way. Martha, a waitress juggling two jobs to make ends meet stumbled on a video that promised riches with a foolproof trading strategy. All it took was a small investment and an unwavering faith in the system. Like many, she had her doubts, but the video's infectious enthusiasm, coupled with the allure of escaping the drudgery of endless shifts, chipped away at her skepticism. What if it's true? A tiny voice whispered in her ear. Ignoring the pit of unease in her stomach, Martha decided to take a dip. Goyed by her winning strategy, she poured in more money, a significant amount that she had scraped together from working overtime and skipped meals. Days turned into weeks, and the market, as it always does, took a turn. The once reliable indicators sputtered, spitting out nonsensical signals. Panic gnawed at Martha as the red tide of losses began to engulf her portfolio. The unbreakable code seemed to have shattered into a million useless pieces. Desperation clawed at her throat. She doubled down, convinced a lucky break was just around the corner. But the market, a fickle beast had no sympathy for blind faith. The final notification, a stark reminder of her folly, flashed on the screen. Insufficient funds. Martha slumped back in her chair, the weight of her foolishness crushing her. The dream of a life beyond the greasy spoon had evaporated, replaced by a bitter reality. The winning strategy had turned out to be a cruel illusion, a siren song that lured her onto the rocks of financial ruin. As the weight of her empty bank account settled in, a new resolve flickered within her. Let me stop there and ask you, what do you think Martha did afterwards? You probably guessed it. She realized there is a work to do to understand the market, and it is more than having a winning strategy. Trading is a battle of you against you, and until you understand this concept, you probably won't win this game even with a winning strategy. Number 4. The classic trading story. Did you know, most traders stop trading after going on a winning run? I know it sounds strange, but maybe I should paraphrase so you'd understand. Did you know, most traders lose money after going on a winning run? They lose even more than they won. You know this, right? Of course you do. It happened to you. This is a classic trading story. And this happens because people like the guru told you to play strategy edge over your trading psychology. It might surprise you to know this, but most of the strategies you know, have seen on YouTube or read about in a trading book works. Well, maybe not all, but most of them work. Let's take a simple strategy like the RSI overbought and oversold signal as an example. Using this strategy 100 times with a minimum 2 to 1 risk to reward ratio, it will shock you to know that you might end up being in profit. But most traders will never find out because they don't have the patience to try the strategy 100 times at the least or use the strategy when market conditions favor the system. 
and all this is down to that fact that you want to make money quickly. After all, you have a strategy with a high win rate. This is another reason trading psychology should be the first thing you pay attention to if you want to be successful as a trader. With the right mindset, you trade in the knowledge that your trades can either win or lose, and that winning or losing trades don't come in a particular order. Number 5. You will still end up losing money. I was at a trading seminar last week, and one of the speakers asked if new traders can really learn from the experience of people who have been in the business, and the answer was a unanimous no. The reason behind this is simple, and it is because of it that you will probably not listen to a word from this video. To explain it, I will like to use a concept known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. The Dunning-Kruger effect is basically a fancy way of saying that people who are bad at something often don't realize how bad they are. Imagine you're trying to learn a new song on the guitar. If you've just started, you might think you sound pretty good, even though you're still struggling with the chords. That's the Dunning-Kruger effect in action. Here's why it happens. Low skill level equates low level of awareness. If you don't have much experience with something, it's hard to judge how well you're doing. You might miss all the mistakes you're making. Simply put, little knowledge can be dangerous. Learning a bit about something can make you feel overconfident, even though you haven't really learned that much yet. This is why you need to get your mind in the right frame before you think of going to the market. Failure to do so even with a strategy that has very high win rate will only end one way. You will blow your bank and probably do it again and again if you don't pay attention to your trading psychology. To conclude, it is important to trade with a good strategy and even better if your strategy is one with a high rate, but without understanding how the market works and what it demands of you will make your trading much more difficult. If you are guessing how to fix your trading psychology, I will suggest you watch this video. In the video, I tell my trading psychology story, lessons I picked up during the process, and how it can help you too. It is highly recommended you give it a watch. If you made to the end of this video, I will say congratulations, and until next time, I wish you the best as you become the better version of yourself.